solar cycle, period of about 11 years in which fluctuations in the number and size of sunspots and solar prominences are repeated. Sunspot groups have a magnetic field with a north and a south pole, and, in each 11-year rise and fall, the same polarity leads in a given hemisphere while the opposite polarity leads in the other. In each rise and fall, the latitude of sunspot eruption starts around 30 degrees and drifts to the equator, but the magnetic fields of the follower spots, sunspots usually come in pairs, called leader and follower, drift poleward and reverse the polar field. In the next 11-year period, the magnetic polarities are reversed but follow the same pattern. Therefore, the magnetic period is 22 years. Although sunspots were known as early as 1600, no one noticed that their number changed with time until the German amateur astronomer Samuel Heinrich Schwabe announced the 11-year cycle in 1843. Swiss astronomer Rudolf Wolf studied historical sunspot records and proposed the scheme still used for numbering solar cycles, with solar cycle 1 beginning in 1755, the earliest year for which he found reliable sunspot numbers. The 22-year magnetic cycle was discovered in 1925 by the American astronomer George Ellery Hale. In 1894 the English astronomer E. Walter Maunder pointed out that very few sunspots were observed between 1645 and 1715, a period now known as the Maunder Minimum. This period coincided with the coldest part of the Little Ice Age, circa 1300 to 1850, in the Northern Hemisphere. When the River Thames in England froze over during winter, Viking settlers abandoned Greenland, and Norwegian farmers demanded that the Danish king recompense them for lands occupied by advancing glaciers. The event was confirmed by the American astronomer J. A. Eddy, using carbon isotope ratios in tree rings. During this time the 11-year cycle continued but with a much reduced amplitude. The data suggest that other such events occurred even earlier in the previous millennium. The late 18th and early 19th centuries also had a brief period of decreased sunspot activity, the Dalton minimum, that also coincided with a period that was slightly cooler than normal. The physical mechanism that explains how changes in solar activity affect Earth's climate is unknown, and these episodes, however suggestive, do not prove that lower sunspot numbers produce cooling. Solar Cycle 25 began in 2019 and will reach maximum in 2025, but that maximum is predicted to be weak, like that of Solar Cycle 24, which had only half the number of sunspots seen in Solar Cycle 23. This decrease in the number of sunspots has led some solar physicists to conclude that the Sunday may be in a period of inactivity like the Dalton minimum. Sunspots are areas of particularly strong magnetic forces on the sun's surface. They appear darker than their surroundings because they are cooler. Even so, scientists have discovered that when there are lots of sunspots, the sun is actually putting out more energy than when there are fewer sunspots. During solar maximum, there are the most sunspots, and during solar minimum, the fewest. Through special filters, sunspots may look like the picture on the left. The sunspot groups are as big as the giant planet Jupiter. On the right is a close-up of some other sunspots. The larger sunspot on the right is bigger than Earth. Credit, SOHO, NASA. As the sun approaches solar maximum, the most active part of its 11-year cycle, its magnetic fields become more and more complex. The magnetic fields loop around, and cross over each other, cutting each other off, and reconnecting. You have probably seen what happens when you sprinkle iron filings on a bar magnet. The iron filings line up along the magnetic lines of force. Similarly, the hot plasma on the sun's surface is at the mercy of the magnetic lines of force. Sometimes the plasma gets disconnected from the magnetic fields when the fields interact with each other. Then particles in the hot, charged plasma can be accelerated to great speed and send powerful radiation into space. This is a solar flare. The frequency of solar flares coincides with the sun's 11-year cycle. When the solar cycle is at a minimum, active regions are small and rare and few solar flares are detected. These increase in number as the sun approaches the maximum part of its cycle. Sometimes, the sun throws off huge amounts of matter. These events are called coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. A CME can release up to 20 billion tons of this material. If that material were rock, it would make a mountain roughly 2.75 miles across and almost one half mile high. 
the ejected material can travel a million or more miles per hour, 500 kilometers per second. Solar flares and CMEs are the biggest, most violent explosions in our solar system, releasing the power of around 1 billion hydrogen bombs. Fast CMEs occur more often near the peak of the 11-year solar cycle, and can trigger major disturbances in Earth's magnetosphere. The Sun can eject matter in any direction, so only some of the CMEs will actually encounter Earth. When Earth is in the path of a CME, we get space weather. The one nice effect is northern lights and southern lights around the magnetic poles. They occur when the charged solar particles follow the Earth's magnetic lines of force right down into the atmosphere at the poles. The particles cause gases in the air to glow and shimmy like colorful, dancing draperies of light. But space weather can also cause a lot of damage to our technologies. Electrical power systems on the ground can be damaged. Astronauts in the International Space Station can be injured. Jets flying over the poles can expose passengers and crews to significant doses of radiation. Earth-orbiting satellites can be disabled. To protect our technologies, high-altitude travelers, and astronauts, we need warning when bad space weather is on the way. Thankfully, we have satellites, such as NOAA's Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellites, GOES that keep an eye on the sun and warn us of its violent outbursts.